Oh, click. Okay, everyone. Shalom. Good evening. Click. I am going to mute everyone for starters. And when we have a chance for various people to share something, you can either physically raise your hand or you'll see a little button on the top right. There's three little buttons and one of them is to raise your hand and that way I can click on you and unmute you. So I'll begin with a l'chaim. If you have some wine or grape juice nearby, feel free to join and I'll say the blessing. But since we're not in the same room, you got to say your own blessing. But you could still say amen to mine. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri HaGafen. Amen. L'chaim, literally as we speak, in about three minutes is sunset here in Oxnard at the beach. And um, it begins the next day in the Jewish calendar. After the sun sets, nighttime is the next day. When God created the world, it says there was evening and there was day, day one. Tonight marks 30 days since the passing and the burial of our dear friend, for some of you here tonight, family member, Judy Goodman, Itabasha Bat Meir, her Yiddish and Hebrew name. In the Jewish tradition, it's customary to mourn the passing of a loved one. So Brian and Michelle had the Shiva period, which ended just before Passover, since uh, her, Judy passed the week before Passover. And that's the most intense, that's the most well-known period observance of, of, of mourning, where ironically, the mourners stay at home. It happens to be when Brian and Michelle were sitting Shiva, everyone was staying at home, where most of us still are. Um, we don't work. Many people haven't been working anyways. We don't wear leather shoes. We don't shave or cut our hair. We wear a torn garment that Brian had uh, above his heart to signify the mourning period. And then after the week of Shiva, then they get up and they resume more regular activity. However, that doesn't end the mourning period. It continues for the first month. Tonight, as the sun sets, that mourning period is relaxed somewhat, and there's more things that they can partake of, more in, things that bring joy. But the actual mourning period continues for an entire year until one year since the passing of a loved one, in this case, Judy, uh, her, her secular date was April 1st, but the Jewish date was the 7th of Nisan. So one, week, one year from then, that ends the mourning period. On the 30th date, which is just starting now, it's tonight and tomorrow, it's customary for family and friends to gather. Oftentimes there's memorials, and, and some occasions it's actually done at a cemetery, at the gravesite, at the resting place of, of the individual. In this case, we were barely able to gather for Judy's interment and, and passage in her, her final, uh, in her final resting place. So certainly now is not an appropriate time to gather at her resting place, uh, perhaps at the first year mark, uh, we'll, we'll do that. But at least we're getting together virtually uh, to share some words uh, and reflections. And as our sages teach us, the living shall take to heart. So in the Jewish tradition, we don't just remember people who passed and we shed a tear and we miss them, but of course we do that. But more importantly, the living shall take to heart as our sages state, means that we must take lessons from their life, in the case of Judy, things we can learn from her and emulate her ways so that her legacy lives on. So we'll begin with a prayer, a psalm, and then we'll go on to the memorial uh, prayer of Kel Malay, and that will be followed with their various people sharing some words. I'm going to attempt, bear with me, to share my screen, which has Psalm 121 in English, um, let me know if you can see it. I believe you should be able to. Uh, I'm going to say it in Hebrew. And if you are able to chant it in the Hebrew, please do so along with me. Uh, unfortunately, here on the screen, it's only in English. So I will um, 
bring that up on another device, or you can take a book of Psalms if you have one in your home. And I chose Psalm 121. It's just very, very beautiful and meaningful. I'll chant it in Hebrew, and then we'll read it together in English. And now we will read it together in English. Psalm 121 should be on your screen. A song of ascent. I lift my eyes to the mountains. From where will my help come? My help will come from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot falter. Your guardian does not slumber. Indeed, the garden of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. The Lord is your guardian. The Lord is your protective shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will guard you from all evil. He will guard your soul. The Lord will guard your going and your coming from now for all time. Okay, let's go back to... Turning off the share screen, bear with me. Okay. Do you see, do you see me? Or are you yes. still see Not my share screen? I do. Okay, yes. great. Yeah, we see, we see the share screen. You do. Yes. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, let's see, how do we turn off the share screen? Stop share. Here we are. Okay. Wow. Uh, listen, you know, we got, part of being a rabbi is you got to be flexible. I'm used to doing events in person, um, but here we are. Okay, so the next prayer, and let me just make sure he's on, is a, a close friend. I think I see him. Here he is. I'm going to unmute him. Uh, Yaakov Sebag, Rabbi Cantor. He is um, our high holiday cousin, and he actually has been coming out to join our community for, gosh, maybe 15 years or so. Um, and Judy has known him and has uh, appreciated him uh, every year when he comes for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. The last few years he came with his wife, then he came with a baby, and now there's a second baby, thank God. So uh, we're going to ask, uh, Yaakov, to please lead us with the Kel Mali Memorial Prayer, where he'll mention uh, Judy's Jewish name, Ita Basha, and her father, Mayer, as is customary. Okay, Yaakov, you're on. Thank you very much. Um, it's a real honor to be here, uh, to see some faces that are familiar and some people that I haven't met, but people that were important to Judy. I'm actually, was looking for a place in my house. The kids are sleeping. My wife is in bed here in New York. It's uh, 10.30 at night. And uh, I was looking for a place in the house, a good place to record. And I thought, my interactions with Judy started in the kitchen. So I thought this was an appropriate place to, to film. And I remember Judy always with a smile, with the, you know, she spent time in the kitchen because she cared about people. And she was so proud to help people and to be there for the community. And it's so beautiful to see how everyone is so proud to be there for her. So I'm going to sing now the Kel Mole Rachamim Memorial Prayer. El Oh, uh -huh. 
Altan Fei Ashtinam Bimalo Bas Mayor Mayor Shehol Lochein Balarachamim Yastireo Biseiser Kinov of Loilomim Vitsroi Vitsroi Adonai Hunachaloso Vesanu Achar Mishkavo Vesholoim Venoema Amen. Thank you. Yaakov, Chazan Yaakov, that was really, really beautiful. Considering that uh, your voice had to travel over 2,500 miles, uh, we still heard you pretty clearly. Great. I'm, happy I'm going to read the English translation of the memorial prayer that Yaakov just chanted. O oh God, full of compassion, who dwells on high, grant true rest upon the wings of the Shekhinah, divine presence, in the exalted spheres of the holy and pure, who shine as the resplendence of the firmament to the soul of Ita Basha, that's Judy, the daughter of Meir, who has gone to her supernal world. For charity will be donated in remembrance of her soul. May her place of rest be in the Garden of Eden, heaven. Therefore, may the Ur merciful one shelter her with the cover of his wings forever and bind her soul in the bond of life. May the Lord be her heritage, and may she rest in her resting place in peace, and let us all say, Amen. As is mentioned also in the Yiskar, it's customary to give charity, so I will immediately put some money. It's not so much about how much, it's the act of giving, because as I mentioned at the funeral, the body and the soul work together, for however long a person lives, in Judy's case, 75 years. And when the time comes, the body returns to its source. From earth you come, and to earth you shall return, as it states in Genesis, in the beginning of the Bible of the Torah, God formed man, Adam and Eve, from earth. However, the soul is the breath of life. It's a part of God. And the soul, just like God, never dies. It's spiritual. It's eternal. So the body returns to earth, and the soul lives on. On the one hand, that's very freeing for the soul. On the other hand, it no longer has the ability to find expression in this physical world. It's specifically when the soul is in a body and they work together, that's when we're able to accomplish good deeds and make the world into a better place, a more loving place, a more godly place. And so therefore, when we remember loved ones who have passed, we immediately connect it to an act of good deeds, an act of charity, so that we are helping their soul find expression in this world. So I encourage you, either now or later this evening or tomorrow, to give a little bit of charity in Judy's honor to a, to, to a worthy cause, 
to help uh, elevate her soul and so that her soul should be, to put it bluntly, we should be her hands and feet. Since she no longer has physical hands and feet, we help her soul continue to shine. I would now like to turn to my dear wife, Racheli, and ask her to share with us some words, and then we'll go on to hear from uh, Brian and Michelle. Racheli, unmute when you're ready. All right. Hello, everybody. Rabbi Dov, you hear me? Yes. I just want to jump in and mention for those who might be new to Zoom, if you click on speaker view on the top right corner, then whenever somebody is talking, they will fill up your screen as opposed to seeing uh, at the moment there's 52 participants. Uh, so the speaker view will let them be whoever is, is uh, sharing at that time, you'll see them. Okay, go ahead, Racheli. Okay. So uh, where to start? <laughs> I will say I, I would never think that I'd bring uh, little ones to a memorial, mm. but somehow, mm. somehow I think it's appropriate that uh, the little one, the little ones found me, uh, even though I'm hiding on the roof here. But I think it's meant to be because I think Auntie Judy would very much want my kids to be participant, <laughs> participating, at uh, at something that is so special for her. She was our children's first babysitter out here. And that's how we got, got, you know, we gave her the name Auntie Judy, and she has been part of the family ever since our oldest was a little baby. And her, our, our simcha was her simcha with each new child. She was so excited to be part of it and so excited. She literally was like the adopted aunt. And it's, um, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Rabbi Dev and I are, God willing, expecting another baby. Uh, in the near future, and I just feel like Judy is kind of hanging out and hovering and wanting to be a part of it somehow. Um, so there's a lot to say, and I would love to hear from many others, but I'm going to jump straight to what my go-to, and my go-to is action. It's all about action, and it's all about how are we going to keep Judy alive in our community because at the end of the day we don't want it to be a memory we 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 can't really even uh, wrap our brains around this being a memory she's she's just so part of Chabad of Oxnard and the Muchnik family and our lives and so an idea that I was thinking about was I don't know who remembers you could kind of give a thumbs up if you remember but Judy put together a Chabad of Oxnard cookbook and yeah, Cedric, you remember that? <laughs> and my mother is on, she remembers. And I think, I don't know, Rabbi Dove, do you have, a, you have the hard copy somewhere? Yes, in fact, not only do I have a hard copy, this is Judy's copy. And I Hello. just, moments before this, uh, this meeting began, I retrieved it from the Chabad of Oxnard kitchen in her shelf, where she still has her items. And, uh, and this is her cookbook that she would use, that she put together. And she had with it uh, some handwritten recipes that never made it in. So I think that's the next thing we wanted to mention. But these are pretty handwritten additions. All right. Yeah. Question. Okay. Yeah, we got a little. Re re uh, I'm guessing you hear me. Okay. So yes, this was a great cookbook that you put together, and I just had a thought of kind of uh, making the next version of it. And our community has grown so much, and there are other new people and new recipes. And my thought was, what if we put together our next, the next version, and to allow Auntie Judy. Um, and Judy to continue, you know, living on in our kitchens and at our Chabad of Oxnard Kiddush by us, you know, having her recipes and other community members' recipes. It's, we're such, we're, we're people in this world and we need action to ground us. And so that it could be such a, a real grounded way to keep her memory alive and bring that, you know, we joke about Judaism being all about food. And the truth is that, that it, it's important. It's an important way of keeping tradition and of keeping the warmth of Yiddishkeit alive in our homes. And so just proposing that anybody that would like to 
join a little committee to get this together. You could email Rabbi Dev and we could get some, get, get, get the next, the next, uh, the updated version of the Judy cookbook, Chabad of Oxnard cookbook. So that was an idea I had. I hope that we, you know, I feel like everything that's going on now in the world, you know, at this point is when I would call Auntie Judy to take this little guy. But, <laughs> but you know, with all that's going on in the world, I feel like it must be a preparation for the time of Mashiach. There's no other explanation I have with the whole world stopping and reflecting and realizing that we have no control and, you know, changing of pace. I feel so strongly that this is some kind of preparation for the coming of Mashiach. And as we know, Mashiach times will be when we see our loved ones again. And we just hope and pray to be able to be reunited with Judy. It's a basha. And may it be tonight. I want water. All right, Rabbi Dev, back to you. Rabbi, you're on mute. <laughs> Rabbi, you're muted. There you okay. Go. You know, this is the, the Rabbi's best sermon is when no one can hear him. So that was that was uh, pre-planned by God, I promise you. <laughs> um, I have a lot to share personally. Racheli just shared some, some personal... Um, reflections. The time is short because we don't want to keep the program longer than an hour and we're coming up on a half hour mark at which point I'd like to turn it to all of you for those who would like to share something. Um, before I turn to uh, Brian and then some other close friends and family who we asked to speak and then anyone else can talk up, I thought instead of giving a sort of a eulogy which I actually did in essence at the funeral with very few attended, I, earlier this evening, I went onto my Google Photos and found one with Judy's face and just said, find. And within two minutes, Google had a full album of many photos over the years that has Judy's face in it. I took out ones that were either repetitive or, or not appropriate. And I just wanted to show some photos that I just quickly found uh, on my Google Drive. And as I'll show them, I will comment because I think it really gives a good uh, image, pun intended, about what type of an individual Judy was, at least to me as a rabbi and, and, uh, and a friend, I, I, I will say. So I'm going to uh, once again attempt to share my screen, go through the photo album, and then we'll have a chance to hear from all of you. All right, so let's see how we do this. Share screen. Okay. All right, can you see a photo? Someone give me a thumbs up. There we go, okay. Well, this is a woman's group gathering many, many years ago. And you can see, of course, Judy smiling right there in the middle, uh, just to the left of Racheli, who's holding a little baby. I'm not sure which baby that is, but I know that this was a long time ago, looking at the different faces here. And she loved being a part of our community and being a part of events, she was always very proud. Here we have Judy sitting around the table at a woman's class at our previous location uh, on Channel Islands Boulevard. And um, this is a very, very special photo to me for a number of reasons. First of all, it's Racheli giving a class and we see uh, women engaged, studying Torah, discussing, but also we have in there my grandmother uh, sitting next to my mother of blessed memory. So on Judy's right is my mom, and to the right of my mom, may she be well, and to the right of my mom is my grandmother of blessed memory. Uh, and there was always a special connection. Uh, first of all, geographic, geographically, my mother and Judy come from the same place. They come from Flush, Flushing in Queens in, in Brooklyn. And um, not Brooklyn, in Queens, near Brooklyn. And um, they actually went to the same school. Uh, different age, but same same school. And uh, in a personal sense, Judy was almost like, uh, I, I don't know if, know if I want to say a mother, but she was definitely like an aunt to our family. We actually called her and will continue to call her Auntie Judy. Here we have Judy at another one of the women's events. I think she won a prize or a raffle and she looks very excited and happy. And it's fair to say that Judy pretty much was always happy. 
she didn't need much. She didn't have much. She, she wasn't a person of means. She had uh, just inner joy. And that's really something that we could all take a lesson from. This is at one of our early events um, that uh, Judy participated in. You could see her there on the left smiling. This is at a Sukkis event where she actually got, was prompted to stand up and speak. And she had confidence to stand up and share in front of everyone. This is when we affixed the mezuzah on her new apartment. And she made the blessing and was very excited to have uh, that mitzvah done. And this is going to be one of many you'll see of Judy baking and cooking. In this particular case, she's making latkes for Hanukkah, which she loved to make. And dare I say, she also loved to eat and, and enjoy them. And, and it wasn't just a physical activity for her. She put her soul and her heart into her food. She loved, I, I'll never forget her face as she watched people eat her food uh, at our community events. And she just took such joy and pleasure from knowing that she was making people happy. Here's more from a different time with latkes. Here we see Judy with one of our daughters, that's um, Menucha, who recently turned 10. So this is probably about uh, eight or not, nine years ago. And she's sitting right there amongst all the children at a, at a community event. Um, and she was always helping out with the kids and she, she loved to just spend time with children and adults alike. She didn't have this attitude of I'm greater than you, I'm older than you, I'm better than you. I mean, I'm a young rabbi, especially uh, 17 years ago when we first came out here. And Judy always showed respect. Uh, and it was just something so genuine and pure about Judy. This is a, a, a close up of that same shot uh, at that Hanukkah event where Judy's holding one of our children. And our children love to be babysat by her. She just showed them unconditional love for their birthdays. She would buy gifts. She always gave them time and attention. She wasn't rushing anywhere. She read them books. She listened to their stories. This is where Judy is, this is learning to read and write Hebrew. She decided uh, maybe 10 years ago that she would like to be able to follow along the prayers in Hebrew. And that wasn't easy for her and she put her time and effort into that. Uh, this is uh, one of the participants was Judy and she, she would review it and go it over and tried very, very hard. Here's a, continuing what she was good at, making food and salads and so on. There she is holding one of my other children at uh, uh, our, one of our family events where our daughter began to light Shabbat candles when she turned three. It was at a Lagba Omer event in the park which is closed now, Oxnard Beach Park. She was waiting online for her food. Uh, there she is again with children helping. And here she was volunteering. This was uh, at a Hanukkah event and she had the different uh, items for Hanukkah menorahs. And, and actually you see right there in the middle is her cookbook that she was so proud of that she had available for sale for a donation to Chabad. And she always offered to help and she never complained, and she just was so loving and caring. There she is with another one of our children. I'll have to ask my wife which one. At this age, they all look the same. <laughs> I think it's a girl. Uh, there we have, oh, that must be Devorah Leah. So this is more recent. Devorah Leah just turned eight. So this is probably seven or eight years ago. And look how beautiful Judy looks and our daughter. Here, our son, Mati. It's helping Judy with the mitzvah of the Lulav and Esrig on the holiday of Sukkot. And she did it with the blessing and with joy. Back in the Chabad kitchen, she's cooking, making food, preparing for holidays, for Shabbats, for events. And this is our daughter Chaya helping Judy there in the kitchen. This was very brave of her. She agreed to give a pickle making class to the older boys of our camp. This is the boys division. And they were quite, how shall we say, cheeky. I think in English it's called chutzpah. And she nevertheless did it. She showed them the different types of pickles. She made a whole display with the different types of cucumbers and how you salt it. And uh, if you look there on the left, you'll see the jars and the salt water she prepared for everyone. She really put her time and effort into it so that uh, it would be a positive experience and a learning experience for them. More about the pickle making there. This was at a, at a Yiddish club that she joined. She loved the Yiddish language and the Yiddish jokes. Here she's helping our daughter, Dvorlea, and some other community children with the challah baking. Our daughter, Chaya's challahs, organized. 
and with so much joy. Look at that face. Look how much she had took pleasure in spending time with others and doing positive things. These challahs that were baked were delivered to homebound seniors, and Judy felt very much for that and wanted to help with that mitzvah. More in the kitchen, she's being helped with Sandy, a community member. At Latkes, this is at a Purim event, and you can see Judy was a good sport. She got dressed up, it was Purim in the shtetl, and was very happy and having a great time. And this is at a lecture, sitting right there up front. This is actually the father of Rabbi Freeman, our Rabbi Rami Freeman. This is his father giving a lecture at an event in memory of Rachel's brother. And it was quite deep and Judy was there and followed. And there's Cedric next to her uh, with a big smile. This is, uh, I believe, Arik, one of our boys. And she loved our children, each one. This is at uh, Shabbaton. We went to a retreat, the National Jewish Retreat, and Judy was part of it and really enjoyed the community and friendship. And this is at a bat mitzvah for Eden, one of our students at Lamp Flatters Jewish Academy. You can see Judy's face. Look at the smile, how much she took pleasure and enjoyed the uh, simcha of a community member of a child. Here she's sitting in our sukkah, ready to eat. Before many people were there, she got her place. She's ready to go. Back with latkes. Uh, this is at another uh, bat mitzvah event at Chabad, back with the latkes, uh, Shabbat dinner. And here's where she was a really good sport. She got, this was two years ago for Purim, she got dressed up as Vashti, which was the, the evil queen, the first queen of King Ahasuerus, who actually was uh, annihilated. And then Queen Esther, of course, became the queen and saved the Jewish people. And she agreed to take that role. And if you look closely at her face, you see the red dots because she, the legend is that Vashti grew pimples, which is why she didn't want to come to the party. So she, she acted in that play and was a very, very good sport. This is at an event for Lamplighters Jewish Academy, a graduation. You can see she's sitting there in the middle, so proud. That's with me doing the blessing over the lulav at a sukkah event, various events. That's at a Purim. I don't recall what this is, but this was with some community members. That must have been after an event, and she was just so happy. This was her family, her friends. This was when she, after she was already in a, in a senior home uh, and uh, I went to visit her. And that's the next last couple of pictures. This is at a challah baking. And some people, uh, Rachel and the kids went to visit. Here we went to visit her. And you see how much love she's giving each kid a hug. And she loved to see them. And she was, this I think is the last family photo we have with her at the Jewish Home for the Aging in Los Angeles. Uh, she was already in a wheelchair and getting weaker, but she showed such love and attention to all of the children. And I must say, even though, her, unfortunately, her memory was going, she remembered all of our kids and their names. Uh, so clearly it was important to her. So that concludes uh, my part of sharing the screen here and some photos. I hope you enjoyed that. I apologize if it went a little longer than I wanted. We're now going to turn over to Brian and Michelle. Uh, We'd love to hear some words from Judy's only son and daughter-in-law. And we know how much she loved you, both of you, and how much uh, time and attention you gave her, especially in the later years. Uh, Judy was very, very fortunate to have you as a son and as a daughter-in-law. Thank you, Rabbi Dev. Uh, those pictures were great. I haven't seen a lot of those pictures, but they, I think they brought a smile to everyone's face. Um, of course, my mom's teaching a pickle making class. If you know me, I like to brine olives. I like to make pickles. So I just wrote the joke to Michelle on the, on the piece of paper. I said, uh, the pickle doesn't fall far from the tree. Um, <laughs> thanks, everybody, for coming out. There's 50 people here. Um, she meant a lot of things to a lot of people, but you, um, you mean a lot to her. So I'm really happy to see all these people come out. Um, the, the stories about the cooking is really funny. And anytime I'm with the rabbi, I always kind of make jabs and say how much she liked lobster. And he's like, what did you say, lox? And I'm like, no lobster. He's like, yeah, she loved lox. And it was always make me laugh. So it's so great having a rabbi like um, Dove around. And one of my favorite stories is when my mom was in Oxnard, this is 17, 18 years ago, she calls me one day, she's like, you don't believe what I saw in Oxnard. I was walking the dog on the beach and I saw an Orthodox rabbi. And I was like, no, you didn't. 
And like, if anyone knows Oxnard, especially Oxnard down by the shore, the last thing you're gonna see, if she told me she saw a shark walking down the street, I'd say, okay, that makes sense. She said, I saw an Orthodox rabbi. I said, eh, maybe you're seeing things. Maybe you saw a guy with a beard or something. So the next day she calls me back. She said, I saw him again. I saw that rabbi. I said, mom, there's no way you saw a rabbi. She said, yeah, he was pushing a baby carriage and he had a baby. She's like, I think I'm gonna go talk to him. And I said, all right, you know, let me know how it goes. And then next thing I know, she's like, he invited me to have dinner at his house. And I said, oh, that's amazing, you know, and tell me more. And then she started telling me about Chabad of Oxnard and how he moved there and how he's starting, you know, each, each um, Chabad rabbi picks a neighborhood, you know, across the world and, you know, sets up shop there to, to teach people about Judaism and, you know, to set up shop. So that was 17 years ago. Um, Chabad of Oxnard moved to uh, have their services at a hotel. They moved to their own facilities, and now they have their own um, shul by the beach, which is which is awesome. So thank you for everything that you do. I really didn't understand community till my mom um, became part of Chabad of Oxnard and some of the things that you guys did for her when she got diagnosed with cancer. My mom worked in the kitchen. She couldn't work, you know, all the time. You know, she had to take some time off and she was getting chemo, but, you know, Chabad of Oxnard continued to pay her while she was doing all of that. And to me, that's, you know, an amazing, an amazing mitzvah. And, you know, I truly understand what community is about. Um, I wrote down some notes, so bear with me while I read them. Um, the, she loved music. So while we're all quarantined and everyone's kind of feeling down, turn on some music and think about my mom. Um, the f people always ask me the first concert that I went to, and the answer is sort of embarrassing because it was Sha Na Na, which is like a doo-wop kind of band from the 70s, and my mom loved that music. Yeah, exactly, Bowser. Um, so she took me to that concert, and it was awesome. And um, even up until, you know, two months ago, when her communication skills weren't great and we really didn't have a lot to talk to. I'd go visit her at the Jewish home and I'd turn on Spotify and I'd play music for her and she loved it. She would, she would bounce around and she'd dance in her wheelchair. She would sing along and it would be, be amazing that, you know, if her memory wasn't great. She couldn't remember what she did five minutes ago, but she remembered a lot of the words to a lot of the songs that she sang. So, you know, while we're quarantined, while everyone's feeling down, turn on some music. It always makes me feel happy. And I know it'll it'll help you guys. Um, I'm looking at my notes. I'm looking at my notes. Um, also, one thing she always did was look at the brighter side of things. So I, I don't like to think of the sad things, you know, about her life. I like to look at the happy things. Um, I thank God that she lived to be 75. That we got to celebrate her 75th birthday and have a party for her. She had over 20 people at her birthday party. She got to meet um, my nep uh, nephew cousin Fiore. And I know um, my cousin Jason's on with his wife, Sharon. So she was really, she loved the little kids. So she was always happy. You know, I'm so glad she got to meet, you know, someone from the family. So once again, thank you everybody for coming out. I know Michelle's got a couple words too. Um, one of the things that I remember, my fondest memory of Judy and a lot of our friends from, our Brian was in a fraternity at ASU. Uh, he was a Kappa Alpha. And a lot of the guys are logged on tonight, um, fraternity brothers. And one of the things that Judy would do when she came out, um, especially like Thanksgivings or whenever she would come out, she'd cook a big meal and everyone would get together and bring everybody together. And it was kind of like having every, it was, Judy was everybody's second mother and um, would always, you know, take us all in and tell us funny stories and make us laugh. And every time um, we all got together, it was like it was a good time and mm -hmm. um, good friends. And and I just wanted to thank, you know, we have so many people on here tonight, like from all over the country and um, the box who are like on the East Coast and, you know, like everybody and all friends from LA and friends from Arizona. And like, we just appreciate all the support and the love from you guys. And um, all the, all of you that we have not met at the Chabad, we just appreciate all the support that in the love that you've given Judy and that she loved you guys too. And it, it really means a lot to see so many faces on this, um, on this Zoom tonight. So thank you so much. Well, thank you, Brian and Michelle for your heartfelt words. And uh, that was very, very beautiful. We know how much mom loved you both and we wish you lots of success and, and blessings and 
only happiness in all of your future endeavors. And there's no question that mom will continue being a part of your life from heaven. As we mentioned, the soul never dies. So we'd like to ask uh, a niece, Sarah, who uh, was almost like a daughter for Judy, to share with us some words. I met Sarah and, and her twin brother, David, when they were quite young. Unfortunately, their dad passed after their mom had passed. And Judy asked me to officiate the funeral. If I'm not mistaken, it was one of the first funerals I did as a rabbi here um, almost 17 years ago. And uh, that was the first and the most recent funeral I did was Judy a month ago. And my hope is that your dad was the first and Judy was the last. And we have an end of funerals. And uh, we have the coming of Mashiach, a time of world peace. And the Jewish belief is that our loved ones who have passed will come back and be with us. The resurrection, it's actually... A, principle of our faith. So let's hope and pray that's very soon. And then we have, we'll have your parents, uh, Sarah and, and David, as well as, uh, of course, uh, Judy back with us. Uh, Sarah, please. Thank you. Are you unmuted? Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, I unmute you. Yes. Thank you all for coming from so far away and nearby to um, celebrate my Aunt Judy. You know, it's funny because she was Aunt Judy to everybody. And um, I know growing up, my brother and I, my friends all called her Aunt Judy. My best friend, uh, Summer's on the line with her mom, and she was Aunt Judy to her. Um, my sister and her kids and um, my brother also on the line somewhere here. And she was Aunt Judy to everyone. And she really treated every person she met like she'd known them forever and they were family. And she was just always such a bright light of joy. And I think the one thing I hope that I can carry from her is her sense of humor. She was always telling jokes and she's very much like my dad in that way. I'm sure growing up with them in that uh, apartment in Queens was just a riot. They must have just cracked their family up the whole time. Maybe uh, some cousins can attest to that that are on the line here, but... And Judy was like a mom to me, and she really took care of us. Before our parents died, she was a, a buffer. Whenever we would fight with our parents, she would come pick us up and, and <laughs> let my poor mom and dad cool off from having twins. And uh, she was just one of the best parts of my whole life, and I'm going to miss her. Rabbi, you're muted. Yes, I'm, I'm back on now. I said, thank you, Sarah, for your heartfelt words. And we know how much Auntie Judy loved you. And her, uh, her love will continue. And I hope she continues to inspire you uh, for many, many years to come, for health and blessings and happiness in you and your husband and the entire family's life. So I know there's others who want to share things, including some cousins and family members and some community members. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, one of our community members, uh, Cedric and his wife, Lauren Minkin, I see are on. And they're actually the first uh, Jewish couple, Rachelie and I met out here when we were looking to open Chabad. And then Judy came around not long later. So they've known Judy from day one uh, in our community, since they've been involved with our community from the beginning. And uh, Cedric, also known as Reb Zissel, is our Gabai. He has a leadership position at, at, at Chabad of Oxnard. So I'm going to ask him to share something. And Lauren, of course, has, was a very close friend of Judy. If you want to jump in, you feel free to do so uh, before we turn it to others. Okay, Cedric, you're on. Well, pretty much everything about Judy has been covered uh, well. Uh, I can only say that, that the the community feeling that <clears throat> we had and that Judy was very much a part of is something that was very special. And Judy's contributions uh, as have been amply uh, displayed in, in, in words and in pictures uh, sort of exemplifies the sense of community that, that we have here. And uh, Judy will be missed. Uh, myself and, and Lauren, who was also close to her, will miss her very much. Thanks for allowing us to say a few words. 
Thank you. Thank you, Cedric, also known as uh, Professor Minkin. I know Judy very much loved you and Lauren, and um, she'll continue to be a part of our lives. Thank you for sharing. Okay, we now have some time for anyone who would like to speak, but not all at once. So maybe we should, uh, if there was a cousin or a relative, maybe we could do that first. Just raise your hand and I'll unmute you. And um, feel free to share something from the heart. Do we see a hand? Okay, I see a hand. Shelly Buck, you're on. You're unmuted. Please introduce uh, yourself and tell us of your relationship. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay. I am Judy's first cousin. Our dads were brothers. Um, there were four girls in our generation, the four Sirota girls. Uh, me, Judy, Eileen, and my sister, Jeannie. Um, I remember Judy when I was a little girl. I used to stay in her parents' apartment um, in Flushing, Queens. It was a one-bedroom apartment. And I used to remember watching Judy and Stevie get ready to go on their dates. I was too young, but I used to admire Judy getting all ready, putting her makeup on, getting her hair done. Um, let's see, we all met, uh, the four cousins, we met and went out to... Um, New Mexico to Eileen's. We had a we had a blast out there in New Mexico together. We went up into the high mountains and we got out of the car to go look at the scenery. You could see a few states from this one mountain. Judy would not get out of the car. Judy, come on. No, <laughs> she would not get out of the car. So finally I managed to get her just to come outside the door. I didn't know she was scared of heights. I got her to walk a few steps in the parking lot. That was it. She went right back into the car. <laughs> and then, let's see, we went out to California. We did a road trip. We went up to Sylvain. Uh, Judy worked for Herzog at the time. So we got to do all this free wine tasting all over the uh, wineries. In uh, Santa Barbara, we went to go see a Kenny Loggins concert. Um, what else? She came to uh, Disney World, to my daughter's wedding. We had a blast there. It was a hoot. And my other daughter's wedding in Fort Lauderdale. And I just have wonderful memories of her. We had a lot of fun. Like everyone says, she joked around. And she was just wonderful to be with. She was just a happy-go-lucky person. And I just have wonderful memories of her. So that's from her cousin, Shelly. <laughs> Well, thank you, Shelley, for sharing that. And uh, I'm sure you have wonderful memories. And may her memory live on as a blessing. We have a hand raised here. This is actually a community member, Elena Friedman. I'm going to unmute you. And uh, you and Charles are on. OK, I, I was originally came to Chabad when you first opened up. And I met several people, and I remember Judy. And then when I was with Charles, we went to Habat again, and I used to help her in the uh, kitchen. Yes, we both worked in the kitchen with Judy. And uh, we developed a really good friendship. And so when we were getting ready to get married, I asked her, would you cater our wedding? And she says, you buy all the stuff, and I'll cater it. And Ever since then, we were really good friends, and I would always celebrate her birthday with her in February. She said, you remember my birthday? And I said, yes. And then um, the exciting time was when she went with her cruise, on a cruise with her kids. She was so excited. She says, I have nothing to wear. And I said, she says, I don't have money to go buy stuff. And I said, okay, I've got a closet full. So I brought it over to her, and she tried it on in front of Fisherman's Wharf there. And said, this is great. I, need to, I don't need to go by. And so we became good friends. And I'll, I miss her a lot, too. Yes, we both do. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Elena and Charles, uh, for sharing. OK, if anyone else wants to speak, there's a way to raise your hand in the, in the uh, digitally. Or I could also snoop around. And if your hand's up in the air, I could unmute you. Feel free. It's open mic Thursday. Any, anything positive in, in honor and memory of Judy, something short and sweet that would uh, help us, inspire us, 
and to learn from her is, is certainly appropriate at this time. Okay, we have Anthony. Well, I don't, I, it's hard to read your name there. Please introduce, you're all muted. Please introduce yourself. Hi, so I don't know if you can see me. Yes, uh, we see I you am, here. I am the other sister of David and Sarah. So for me, I met Aunt Judy when I was seven years old and um, Steve, which is her brother, was dating my mom. She came from New York to visit and I guess she had had a long flight and I just remember her saying, hey little one, where's the restroom? So I showed her to the restroom and then she came out about, I don't know, 20 minutes later. She's like, everything here in California is so fast. She said, I wasn't expecting this. She says, but you, you. you're going to um, remember me. And at that moment, I said, you're my Aunt Judy. So I've been calling her Aunt Judy since I was seven years old. Before David, before Sarah, before any of you, she to me is the real Aunt Judy. And I know my brother, he's online too. <laughs> he's probably laughing right now, but that's the story of how I met Aunt Judy. And uh, I'm really sorry for your loss, um, Brian. Um, I've known, we've known each other for a really long time and um, I'm always reachable through Facebook. Um, that's really all I have to say. I mean, she, she raised my kids as well, uh, all three of us, you know. Uh, okay. Anthony, I have another She's son, Dominic. Judy. And uh, Alex is not here, he's in college. So thank you everybody for such wonderful memories of such a beautiful woman. I'm sorry I didn't get to Thank you. Thank you for your words. Thank, thank you so thank much you. For, for sharing. Thank you. Okay, we heard from, from some family members. Is there a community member who wants to share something? I don't know how to do it. I tried. I hear someone. Someone unmuted yeah. themselves. Oh. oh, hi, can you hear me? We hear you. We hear you. Oh, Who's great. talking? Who's talking? Uh, hi, this is uh, Lenny Goodman. Actually, I'm Brian's uh, uncle, uh, and I've known Judy for uh, probably close to 15 years. I feel very blessed to what everyone has said. It describes, in my mind, Judy so well. Uh, Judy, I knew her, uh, Judy's uh, her father, uh, Meyer, and uh, her mother, Thelma, uh, and Judy was to them the same way as Brian and Michelle was to Judy. They, they were a very close family. When Judy's mom and dad got ill, she was always there for them. Uh, she, I, I knew her when she was living in Flushing, Queens. I knew her when she moved to Brooklyn as well. And she was always a warm person. We really did love being part of a Jewish community. And I think we, we, were, we were, were living in Brooklyn. We were part of an Orthodox synagogue. Um, she always in her mind talked about things like, you know, maybe one day I should be part of this. I'd love to be, learn more about Judaism, how to learn to be Hebrew. And she was never so happy as when she moved to California. And I remember her calling me and saying, I found the most wonderful Jewish community here with the most wonderful rabbi and so many people. And I would talk to Brian all the time. He said, you know, my mom is so happy. I said, your mom is always happy. But now she's even happier. And the fact that she met so many fine people like all of you, I know is the joy of her life. And having a son like Brian and a daughter-in-law like Michelle, um, and and having her children that she could help with the fact that she can help other people and this is the way she was from the very beginning from the, i met her i wouldn't really be this nice and sure enough and she remained that way 
all her life. So I thank all of you who got to know her better than I did in recent years because I stayed here, uh, you know, in, on the East Coast. But mm -hmm. we, we all love her mm -hmm. very much, Rabbi, and thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia, for sharing. I see now um, Joy Epstein has, has uh, raised her hand, a community member whose son Alex had his bar mitzvah. He was in our Hebrew school. Joy, are you still on? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, you're unmuted. Go. So I just wanted to share that Judy is amazing. Um, I remember like when he had his bar, my son had his bar mitzvah two and a half years ago already. And I, the first thing I asked Rabbi Dove was, can Judy help me cook the food? Um, and she was, and it was at the time when she was starting to get sick. And so she did similar to Elena, get the food and I'll help you out. Um, but I brought a community of people and we all got together and she just always had a smile. And um, my son has huge uh, allergies with food. And every time I would go, and she would put food aside for him specifically without nuts if he was coming or he, she would she would always make sure to take care of him and that's just the person that she was she was just a loving um generous sweet woman who i know we will all miss uh, may her memory be a blessing thank you joy for your words thank you okay lenny goodman I don't see you, but I see your hand raised. Did you want to speak? Oh, Rabbi, that was actually when you, it was Olivia, that was actually Lenny speaking. So oh, that sorry. was Lenny already. Okay, so I don't see any hand raised at the, at the moment. Uh, we're getting, we're just yeah. after. Anyone else before we wrap up? We're at the Mo one hour Mo mark. Moshe Feivel Schneider. Okay, Moshe Feivel Schneider, he's on the phone. So we can hear him and not see him. Uh, thank you for joining us. This is Moshe Feivel, also known as Mike or Michael, Dr. Michael Schneider, who lived in our community for many years and now lives nearby in Camarillo, so he's joining us on the line. Moshe Feivel, you're on. Uh, uh, Judy uh, was, uh, was about, was it, was it Chabad of Oxnard for at least two years before I arrived there? And I had the privilege of watching Judy increase in her her participation in in the in the in the, the services that we had there dove uh, began a class in the mechanics of prayer and she was a regular there every shabbos morning which was my, which was my day to be at chabad of oxnard and we were uh, regulars at that class i also remember her learning increased details of kashrut uh, to to in order so that she could actually do the cooking at chabad at the chabad level of kashrut and uh, she uh, really was Bible. passionate about yes i want to jump in for a second and point out that her learning about uh, kashrut kosher was not only for chabad she actually converted her own home and kitchen to be fully kosher. And she, for the last number of years, kept a fully kosher kitchen and only kosher products. And uh, that, that's, that's a tall order for, for someone who hasn't been doing that their whole life and uh, advanced in, in, in years. So that's really inspiring uh, for me personally. But go ahead, back to... Uh, yeah, uh, that, that's where I was going. And she oh. didn't want it just to be kosher. She wanted all her dishes to be toiled. Okay, and thank I remember you. I said Cedric was involved with with that toiling for Judy because she wanted that level in her own home too, and that was a level that was above what I was doing at home. And she inspired me and Suzanne when we got our house here in Camarillo and decided to upgrade our level of kashrut, and we toiled the dishes because Judy made it a business to toil her dishes. It, it was uh, an inspiring thing to see it going on. The other thing is, uh, as, as others have mentioned, if she knew there was something that was special that you needed and it involved food, she wanted to, 
to do something about that. And in the, in her cookbook, uh, my submission was my grandmother's uh, sweet and sour meat borscht. And Judy made it her business to make that for me and make not just one serving, but multiple servings so I could have it for quite a while, you know, freezing some and, and, and unfreezing it and having more of it later. And that's, that's one of the most intense memories uh, that I have is that, that, that sweet and sour meat borscht that Judy made for me, which I'll never forget. Wow, thank you, Moshe Feivel, for sharing that. And we know that you gained a lot from her physically through the food, but also emotionally and spiritually from uh, everything she's done at Chabad. Thank you. I now want to turn to someone very special who uh, is up late at night on the other side of the country, and that's my dear father. Uh, he's the angel-like looking man there with the big flowing white beard where it says Muchnik Arts. That's my dad. He's a, he's a famous Hasidic artist. His Jewish art is all around the world and even right behind him on the wall. Um, so I'm gonna ask my father to share something about Judy. And I just wanna say that seeing my father here smiling uh, is not something I take for granted anymore. Uh, unfortunately, my father, like many others, uh, especially in New York, was hit with the coronavirus pretty seriously. And um, Thank God he's here, he's alive, he's recovered, he's smiling. Unfortunately, some of his friends and colleagues were not as lucky and God took them back. But I just wanna uh, use this opportunity to point out that we should be grateful and appreciative of the people we have, uh, not just like now we're talking about Judy past tense. Um, so shout out to my dad, you should have many, many more years of health and happiness and blessings and lots of nachas, Jewish pride from all of your children and grandchildren and many more to come. I don't know if you were on the line earlier when Racheli shared that, please God, we're expecting soon in the coming days and weeks. So you'll be a Zaidi again uh, with only health and happiness. So without further ado, Ta, please share okay. something. First of all, um, uh, of course, I recognize so many faces here of people who have spent time with uh, uh, Rabbi Dov and Racheli at the Chabad House or other simchas that we've met at. and. Um, and how much um, I enjoy seeing all those familiar faces and to all the relatives or people I've, I haven't yet seen. Um, I just want to thank you for just, um, just, just being, just knowing my, my son and Racheli is something very special for us and um, I hope special for you. Um, and that's part of what I want to say about Judy. Um, I don't even, she just seems to go back from when we started coming out to visit Dove and Rachele and the family. And um, Judy was just, she was like an integral part of our experience. Every time we come out to see the Mishpacha, Judy was right there. She was in the Chabad house. She was, you know, and the pleasure, I have to tell you, the pleasure of seeing her was always something very special because it was like, to know that your children are uh, are influencing and and being supportive, whether financially, morally, uh, and what Judy did was she was incredible in the kitchen over there, and she, and just and not it was it didn't stop there. Like everyone said, she just became a, a total a, a part of the community, and it just it's like when you love your children, you're gonna love their friends and and their the people who support them. And so we had a great love for Judy, and she was always really, it was always a thrill just to see her every time I'd walk into the Chabad house. And I just wanted to share that with everybody. And uh, her neshama, her soul, she had a, 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 a big aliyah, which means an elevation in Shemayim, in heaven. And I'm sure she is now hearing all of these, what we're talking about, and that she's sending her blessings to all of us, and we should utilize them for all good Jewish things. Amen. Thank Amen. Thank you, Ta. And since we're on the East Coast, um, we're now at, at the hour mark, uh, a little bit over an hour of sharing. So we're um, going to wrap it up with our Chazen, who's still back there. He's still in New York, I think, Yaakov. Chazen Yaakov Sebag. We'll ask him to share a song with us, and we could sing along a song, a famous Jewish song, which is a request from God that he should bring peace to the whole world. 
We ask for a world of health, a world of blessings, a world of peace. And um, an, old, an old Yiddish saying, when you speak about somebody who's passed, is they should be a good to better, which basically means that they should intercede on behalf of us. So now that uh, Judy Itabasha is closer to God, uh, is more of a soul than a body, and therefore she, she can uh, beseech heaven that God should bring an end to this pandemic. And not just the current one, but in general, an end to exile, an end to pain, an end to suffering. And we should have that time very, very soon of world peace, which we'll sing now. God should bring peace to the whole world. And um, the time of Mashiach. And at that time, as I mentioned earlier, our loved ones will come back. And we look forward to seeing Judy Itabasha in her full health and full glory very, very soon. And let us all say, Amen. So Chazan Yaakov, I don't know how your vocal cords work at, um, what is it, almost midnight, but uh, you can swallow a raw egg and give us your best rendition of Ose Shalom. I think for the sake of all of our ears, we'll keep everyone else on mute, but please do sing along, uh, if you will, in your own uh, private quarantine uh, stay-at-home situation. Reb Yaakov, you're on. Once we're talking about Judy also, you know, Judy was, like we said, very involved in the kitchen. They say a story of a cantor who uh, went to a cantorial dinner. And every time they asked him, uh, would you like to eat this delicious food that we have at the dinner? He would say, not until I sing, not until I sing. And then uh, the guy comes home, the, the, the one, one fellow that's at the dinner gets home and his wife asks him, how was the cantor? He says, he should have eaten. Anyway, um, yeah, my voice is fine. After, I'm just recovering from a little bit of a cold, but I think we can make this work. Oyase shalom aleinu v'al ko Yisrael v'imru v'imru amen. Oyase shalom v'imru mab. Oyase shalom aleinu v'al ko Yisrael v'imru. Shalom, <laughs> Shalom Aleinu V'yal ko Yisrael V'yemeru Amen Bravo, bravo! Wow, that was great, Yaakov. My, my screen is shaking. <laughs> Good job. Thank you very much. I, I, I had a, a concert with a, a Chabad in, in, in England uh, few, like the last week. Um, and, and very often when I sing, my daughter comes over. She's two years old. She comes over and she says, it's too loud for my ears. <laughs> Fortunately, now she's sleeping. So she didn't, she didn't interrupt. Well, we look forward to having you and your wife and your two children now, a daughter and a son, Please, God, uh, September for the high holidays. We sure hope by then we could all gather together and pray together. Assuming hopefully, we're allowed out of our houses. Hopefully, hopefully before then. So I'll conclude with a blessing. Thank you all for joining us. And um, I see here uh, we have Susie Shoem, and I think I saw Steve on uh, with, uh, with the audio before. And I just want to give a shout out that thank God Dr. Shoem is recovering and we've been praying for him. And I want to use the opportunity to, that for all of us, since we have a gathering, a positive gathering, uh, and we had words of Torah, we had prayer, charity, we have a lot of energy and power at this evening. So let's uh, pray together that everybody who needs a recovery should have a full and complete recovery and nobody else should get sick. 
We've lost too many good people already. There should be an end to this. And we should have a world of peace and God should have compassion on his creations. Like a father, God is our father in heaven. He should have Rahmanis, he should have benevolence and compassion on his children. And we should finally have an end to illness and pain and suffering and peace in the world. And our anti Judy back with us with the coming of Mashiach. Amen. L'chaim, l'chaim. Michelle, um, uh, Brian, Michelle, you get the last licks if you want to say anything or thank everyone. And then we uh, will close it for the night. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, it really means a lot to me. It would mean a lot to my mom as well. I'm sure she's looking down and smiling. She's probably in the kitchen up there cooking something. Um, just thanks. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you all for joining us. It was nice meeting some, some new relatives and people. God bless you all. We should get together soon in person for happy occasions. L'chaim, have a great evening. Thank you all for coming. God bless you all. Shalom, shalom.